I'm going to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15 on today. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And we're going to look at verses 10 through 11 and then verse number 22. 1 Kings chapter 15. If y'all would indulge me and stand as we read the Holy Writ of God. Only three verses today. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verses 10 and 11 and then verse number 22. Uh, look in your table of context to find it if you need to. That's all right, long as you find it. And when you find it, shout, I got it, I got it. All right, all right. Uh, I'm going to try to read that from the screen back there today, okay? So if I mess up a word, it's just because I can't see. <laughs> but you see it, all right? It says, then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is, y'all read the next part of that verse. Turn back from following me, all right, what's the next part? Mm-hmm. And it grieves Samuel. That's a very important statement. And it grieves Samuel. What's the next part? He did that how long? All right, let's go to verse number 22. Verse number 22 reads, uh, well, y'all read verse 22 out loud for me. And Samuel said, hath the Lord burn off Mm-hmm. Here come your part. Yes, of rams. I want to talk today about the power of obedience. Please remain standing as we're going to pray together. Father, bless now this word that we're about to receive. We need a word like this one because you have commanded our obedience to you. So bless us now in this divine moment to receive divine instruction and revelation in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to talk today about the power of obedience. Say that after me, the power of obedience. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, just to run a quick background, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, God has decided, and you can find this in verses 1 through 3 in your spare reading, God has decided that it is now time for him to take vengeance on a group of people called the Amalekites. And the reason that he has decided to take vengeance on the Amalekites is because this was one of those groups of people who opposed the children of Israel after they came out of the land of Egypt. And God has now sort of kept a record of those who try to hold back his people. And I think that's a very interesting piece of revelation that God has this thing about him that every now and then causes him to take names. He remembers the things that have happened to us along the way and even though he does not always do it immediately, fast and in a hurry, eventually God always gets back around to paying us back for everything that the enemy tried to do to us. That's why you really shouldn't complain much when the enemy steals something from you because sooner or later God will see to it that you will get back everything that the enemy tried to take away from you. This story sort of teaches us that. And God has decided that it is now time for me to go back, get this, and to make good on everything that the enemy tried to do to stop them. Not that they stopped them, but the fact that they tried to do it. I think that's powerful in and of its own self because God doesn't always avenge us for the things that are done to us, but every now and then he avenges us of the things that they tried to do. 
That's why it's so good to be on the Lord's side. And not only is it good to be on the Lord's side, but there's another subliminal message that you probably don't want to hear it, but I got to tell you to be true to the context here, to be true to the subliminal message here. And that is that if God is on your side, and if God himself remembers the things that have been done to us, therein is a very glorious message, and it is this. Please hear me. This means that I don't have to fight my own battles. I don't have to fight my own battles. Some of us in this room are tired and frustrated, and we are fatigued in our spirits and in our bodies, and it's all because we have decided to entertain the idea of fighting too many battles. I've learned that if you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles, victory shall be yours. You see, victory might be yours if you fight it because you win some, you lose some. But if God fights your battles, he always becomes victorious. If you get that at the first part, you all ready halfway through the message. Here's the part that's really interesting for us about the power of obedience. And here it is. God has said that he is going to cause his people to be victorious in a battle against the Amalekites. And here were God's instructions. Let the church say instructions. Here were God's instructions. Y'all ready for this? Take out everybody. I'm giving you the power. I'm giving you the authority. I'm giving you the might. I'm giving you the strength. Saul and your army, your responsibility is to take out everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. God said, take out everybody. Slaughter everybody. Don't leave anybody. Men, women, boys, girls, children, everybody. That's what God was on. He said, don't leave anything. I don't need you to leave anything that can be seed enough to produce a harvest from these people. I mean, th this is what God was on. God was on the kind of thing that he was so serious about getting vengeance for his people that he wanted to totally wipe out an entire nation of people. Watch this, because when God got your back, he has your back all the way to the mastery. See, God is not like some of your frenemies because some people have your back to a certain extent. But God has your back completely. God is not like those people that say stuff like this. I'm with you when you're right. Anybody that tell you I'm with you when you're right, tell them I said to tell them, get out my life. Because here's the truth of the matter. I won't always be right. And you need some people in your life that even when you're not right, they don't have to agree with you, but that doesn't mean that they cannot stand in agreement with you. Are y'all with me? So God is saying, I I'm not just with you halfway. I'm not just going to deal with your enemies partially, but I'm going to deal with your enemies completely. He said, kill all of them. Destroy all of them. Here it is. I need you to get this in your spirit. Take out everybody. Let the church say everybody. Everybody. Come on, everybody. Everybody means everybody. Those were the instructions. Guess what Saul did? He gets over there, realizes that he got the victory. He's got it won. He's got it made. And then decide he want to celebrate and play a little bit. And he gets to the king. The king of the Amalekites. And guess what he decides to do? Spare his life. I'm just going to capture you. I'm just, I'm just going to play with you. You ever seen a cat play with a mouse? 
You sit there and just look at the little mouse just getting slapped around. Just pushing the mouse over in the corner. Mouse try to lead. The cat just grab it by the tail. Okay, y'all ain't never had one of them in y'all house. <laughs> just sitting there watching them play with it. The mouse can barely move. The cat let it get so far away. Then it jump right in front of it. And you're looking at it. Just going to take the thing out. Just going to kill the thing. Just going to eat the thing. This is what Saul decided to do because sometimes you got to be careful when you get a little bit of success. But when you get a slight advantage, there's something about getting slight advantages many times that causes us to get the big head and feel like we got it, watch this, and the enemy has no comeback in them. I don't know who I'm talking to in this room today, but who's playing with the mouse? Who, who's playing with the mouse that God told you to destroy? Who, who is it that's trying to bring back a souvenir F from a past that God told you to destroy, from, from a, a dead situation that God told you to destroy, but, but you got to take back something as a sign, as a banner, to let everybody else know you won, but you didn't win completely because what you were supposed to destroy is still alive. You know, that's, you know, you, you ended the relationship, but you still got the number. You know, you, 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 you thought it was over. You, you thought it was good. You thought it was dead. You thought it was buried. As a matter of fact, you went to church and told people that you would deliver, but then when you saw them in the mall, you got mad all over again. That ain't deliverance. That's just avoidance. God's instructions were clear. Take out everybody. Watch this. And because he did not take out everybody... The conclusion of the story is God took his hands off Saul and was told while he was yet king that somebody else is going to get your position. God bad, ain't it? He don't even fire you before he tell you who it is. He's going to get to replace you. I'm going to fire you and I'm going to let the person that you can't stand the most get your job. That's the pain of disobedience. But can I tell you what the power of obedience is? It's in your Bible if you didn't tear it out. If, if you go back to verse number 10, if you go back to verse number 10, what does God say? He says, it repented me. It's deep when God has to repent. I mean, how, how bad of a person you got to be for God to say, boy, I wish I never even... If I had known you were going to trip like this, I never would have. Here's number one. When you operate in obedience, here's number one. God has no regrets. Let the church say no regrets. I don't know how you feel about it, but I don't want God to bless me and then in the midst of my being blessed has to look at me and have an SMH moment. What I do that for? The Bible said it repented God that he set Saul in that position. By the way, for the record, God never wanted the children of Israel to have a king because he himself wanted to be their king. The only reason he gave them a king is because they came together in the spirit of agreement and God gave them a king because even though they came together for the wrong purpose, the fact that they came together at all, God honored their request. But he never wanted them to have a king. Can I ask you a question in passing? What do you have that God didn't really want to give you, but because you begged him so much, you got it anyway? And now you regretting what you asked for? And God is saying, you never should have. What, what did you ask for that you weren't ready for in reality? 
Because I've learned that there are some things that we desire more ontologically and then when the reality sets in, we don't want it no more. Do you just want to be married because you're not? Only to get married and say, God, would you please do something with them? Watch this, watch this. Who in here want to be single just because you're married? At your cousin in church. Because you look and see other people smiling and free and ain't got to check in. Ain't got to ask to go out of town or check in to go out of town. Wondering what time you getting off and all that kind of stuff. We want certain things when we don't have them and then when we get them, it repenteth us to have it. You ever seen that car? Ooh, Lord, I want that car right there. It's all pretty and shined up and clean. You know they ain't gonna put it on TV without detailing it first. And you get the car of your dreams and it smells so good and it's so nice and you driving it off the lot and you putting all that gas in your car so other people can see it so you can say, look at what I got. And then when that first note comes and you got to pay that thing. Don't you miss your old car that was paid off after you get to about that eighth or ninth payment? That thing didn't have no air in it, but you're like, man, I'll roll these windows down today, boy. It's, boy, it's hot out here. Be honest. Anybody in this room beside me ever did something that you regretted? That you wish you hadn't done? Places you went, you're like, dog, why did I do that? You ever went with somebody and then months passed, and you were like, what the was I thinking? Broke, ugly, living with his mama and didn't go to your church. All four of them things didn't work. The only good thing about her was that she was fine. Nothing else. Brothers, oh, you can't say nothing. You don't want your lady to know that you even had a girlfriend before her. <laughs> or maybe it was your neighbor them that was sitting up in the clinic biting their nails. Thinking about every piece of unholy fellowship. God said, here it is, not the repent for forgiveness sake, but he said, this is a sorry situation. It's a sorrowful situation. But when you operate in obedience, God has no regrets. God doesn't have to repent for what he's done for you. That's the reason why every time God blesses you, every time God opens a door, every time God makes a way for you, the first thing you need to do is give him praise and glory and honor and thanksgiving because the last thing God needs to do is look at a blessed person that don't do nothing by it. Don't tell me how much money you make until you tell me how much money you give. Don't tell me what you do for, for yourself until you tell me what you do for others. Because when there is the power of obedience, God has no regrets. I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel God in this moment. I don't want God to have to think twice about blessing me the next time. No regrets when you operate in obedience. But God said about Saul, this has repented me 
that I've done this. That's number one, no, no regrets when you operate in the power of obedience. Here's number two, no resentment. No resentment. No resentment when you operate in the power of obedience. This is powerful right here because ch check this out. H here's what I believe is verse number 11. Here's what Samuel said. He said, this thing has grieved me. He said, I'm mad about this. All right. What Saul has done made God mad. When it made God mad, it made Samuel mad. I'm finna, oh God. I hope y'all ready for this. You got to be a mature Christian to receive this part right here. You know you're growing in God when the things that upset God upset you. Mm -hmm. He said, God, since you have repented that you put Saul in this position, the Bible says it grieved Samuel. That Hebrew term for grieve literally means he got hot. 38 hot. 357 hot. 9 hot. I'm talking about the, the, the kind of hot that, that, that I could just hurt Saul for how he hurt you. When you operate in obedience, there is no resentment. Get this. There are some people who may not like you, but that's cool. At least the right people dislike you. God, I wish I had somebody to hear me. I want evil people to hate me. I want people that don't love God to dislike me. Can I tell you what, what's, what's wrong with some of us? We, we talking about, I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care how you feel about me. I, I don't care. I ain't study you. I, long as you don't touch me. Ain't that it? Ain't, long as they don't touch me. Say what you want to say. Long as you don't touch me. Because the moment you put your hands on me, I'm going to show you who I am. You may walk up here, but you're going to limp back. Come on. If you're feeling froggy, leap. All that good stuff. And we got some terms. And we got some cliches. Half of us just fight off instinct. We don't have no, we ain't got no kind of training. We just, we just know what we think to do. You run up over here. I'm going to snatch that wig right off her head. I'm going to grab her by her hair. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put him in a choke hole. You don't even know if they're going to let you get close enough to do that then what you're going to do we just got all this bad talk because somebody don't like us and we don't consider the fact watch this that God ain't siding with you when your enemies are his friends I need the right people hating me I need people that don't like God to dislike me because if you got a problem with God but you really love me apparently I'm not showing enough God in your presence you're growing when what grieves God begins to grieve you how does God feel about that I just want to be happy does it make God happy why you can't just be happy for me because God ain't happy it's quiet in this Presbyterian church. Well, I mean, I, I thought of all people, you would be the one that's happy for me. But, but if God ain't smiling, why you expect for me to be cheesing so big? But when you obey God, there's no resentment, which literally means, watch this, there are some people that you will have against you simply because you were disobedient. Simply because you were disobedient. Samuel wasn't cool with Saul at this point no more. You were all right at first. God sent me to anoint you. But now that you've made God mad, he says, I'm hot on the inside. Can I ask you a question before I give you the last and final point? 
what you mad about that God happy for? And what are you happy about that God's frowning about? No resentment. Let the church say no resentment. I'll tell you a secret about resentment. Here it is. You can't be blessed by people you resent. You can't be blessed by people that you resent. Somebody can open the door for you on your way in. Uh-uh, you go first. I'm going to pay for it. Uh, I got it myself. Mm -mm, I got it. I got it. I don't care how high it is. I got it. I don't want you doing nothing for me. You can't be blessed by people you resent. Saul is in that place of resentment with Samuel. Samuel in that place of resentment with Saul because he has made God mad. Here's third, final, number three. When you operate in the power of obedience, there will be no reversals. No reversals. No rejection. No turnaround. No reversal. Let the church say no reversal. That means that when God gives it to you, he doesn't reverse the transaction. He doesn't send it and get a refund. Say, no, that's all right. Get back, get back, get back. No, 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 no. When he blesses you, he gives his gifts without repentance. Everybody talking about, you know, God, he just, he just going to take it away from, that's not really God's plan. That's not God's attitude. That, that's not God's mind. He didn't give it to you for the sake of taking it away from you. He gave it to you so that you could use it for his glory. He, he's not interested in reversing what he has put on you and when you operate in obedience you don't have to look over your shoulder wondering what other folk gonna do to you the devil always busy I got two words for you so what folk get on my reserve nerve doing that too but you know the devil busy like God lazy like God ain't doing nothing like he ain't always busy opening doors that I can't see. Like he's not busy taking care of you. He got busy this morning when he touched all of us with a finger of love and woke us up and gave us a reasonable portion of our health and strength. He was busy when he put food on our table and clothes on our backs. He was, he was busy when he regulated our minds. He was busy enough to make sure that we knew the difference between the bathroom and the kitchen this morning. He's always busy doing something but when you operate in obedience, you don't have to worry about him reversing it, taking it away from you. Some of us are spiritually paranoid because we ain't living right. Oh my God, oh my God. I just don't, I just don't know. You see, God done blessed you, but you keep a packed bag at the door just in case he come back to get his stuff. I don't know when God going to take this thing away from me, so... That's how some people treat relationships. They don't know how to handle good relationships. So they sabotage it first. So in case the relationship ends, they can be the one to end it because I fear being dumped. I'm going to start preaching good if y'all don't say amen. Just... <laughs> but when God blesses you, there's no reversal when you're obedient to him. Let me give you the story, then we're going to raise up. So Saul goes out with all of his troops, all of his army, all of his men, and they are destroying people one by one, left to right. Finally, they get to King Agag, they get a couple other places. We're going we're gonna to keep these for ourselves. I'm, I'm going to show this gift off to everybody else to let people know, hey, don't mess with me. I captured the king. And the same one that anointed him, Samuel, goes to him and says, um, Bruh, um, you did pretty good, but everybody knows that almost doesn't count. You didn't take out everybody. Watch Saul. Watch, watch this undisciplined mind. Watch this undisciplined mind. You ain't say nothing about everything else I did do. Boy, it's quiet in this house. You always point out what I didn't do, but you ain't saying nothing about what I do. 
You, you always want to point out my F's, but you ain't say nothing about these A's over here. The problem is you can make all A's and one F and still miss the honor roll. I just, I just kept, I just kept the king. I, I kept a few, I kept a few pieces of property, you know, just, just, just to have some for myself. I ain't want to destroy it all. You should be able to understand how I feel. I did all this hard work. Watch this. I want to have some to show for it, don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Want to have? I want to get. Watch it. I want to get some out the deal. I, I, want, I want to get some, you know. Just, just, I mean, if it's just some, if it's just five dollars, some is better than none, right? Oh, this is a good sermon right here. For, for everybody that feel like they always got to get something for self-gratification. I just, I just want to get some. I mean, you can get fired from a job, but you just, you just got to throw an egg at the building just so you feel better. He, he broke up with you and, and, and you mad and you mad and I got to do something even if we don't get back together so you take your little key and walk past the car like you didn't know you were scratching it. I bust the windows out your car with your save set. I got to get some, I got to get some out the deal. You going to divorce me? I'm taking you to the cleaners. You don't even need the money. I, I want alimony, child support, back pay, whatever counts. I don't even know how to turn. But if it's something to be got, I want it. Gotta get something out of the deal. And that's what Saul did. But the problem is, God's instructions were destroy everything. Watch this. God said, I don't want it. Why are you trying to keep it? If I don't want it, why you want it? If I said destroy it, why are you trying to salvage it? Why are you trying? I just believe I can bring this thing back to life. Not if God wants it dead. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. And so here is what Saul said and we go on to Applebee's right here. I tell you what, I'm really not going to keep it for myself. I'm going to give it back to God. We're going to sacrifice it as a burnt offering, as a burnt sacrifice. That, 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 that'll make God happy. That, that'll make God proud. Hold on. If God said destroy it, why are you trying to give it to him? Oh, who is it at your cousin church that keep trying to give God stuff that God don't want? They, they say give the Lord some praise. God don't want that. Give God some thanks. Thank you, Lord. God don't want that. We give instructions in church. We think about it if we want to obey it. But you will listen to a song and do exactly what the song tell you. Right foot stunk. Left foot stunk. Cha-cha real smooth. With your arthritis in your knee having self, your hip replacements, you still out there trying to do it, trying to wobble, trying to toot to the left, toot to the right. Stop, think about it, all that good stuff. I ask you to stand for the reading of the word. Child, my feet hurt. I just walked in here. You don't understand what I've been through. How long we got to stand? We in the middle of church right now. If you hear e e e e electric, slide, somebody gonna get up because you are gonna have a flashback. You gonna have to rub down tonight, trying to tear the club up, trying to tear the floor up. How low can you go? Oh boy, can you go down low all the way to the floor? We got to grab you to help. You walk out the place today because you will obey an instruction that won't do nothing but have you laid up in the bed for the next three days. And God give an instruction and we got to think about it. I don't know, let me pray about it. How you going to pray about what God told you to do? Who you going to pray to? If God is your problem, who you going to tell on God? 
And Samuel walked up in that joint, Minister Jimmy, he walked up in that joint and said, hey Saul, what's all this? Oh yeah, this is the stuff I kept, man. <laughs> you know me. This is the stuff I kept, you know what I'm saying? I know what you said. I know what you said God said, but this is the stuff I kept. But you know, I'm just going to give it sacrifice to God. You know, we're going to do these burnt offerings. And Samuel said this. Get this, people of God. Did God ask you for sacrifices? Watch this. You think you can pay God off? You ain't got enough money to pay God. You ain't got enough bulls to pay God. You, you, you ain't got enough oxen to pay God. Did God ask you for a sacrifice? Did God ask you for a burnt offering? He didn't ask you for your sacrifice. Here it is. He asked you for obedience. That's what he meant when he said obedience is better than sacrifice. That is not a term. Watch this. Parents should use to guilt their children into doing what you tell them. They should obey you, but that is not a term or a phrase that you should use to guilt your children to obey you when you tell them that obedience is better than sacrifice. Because what that literally means is God tells you to do one thing, you don't really want to do it, so you try to give him a gift to make him forget what he told you to do. God is saying, I would rather you had destroyed everything than for you to try to give me something because check this, I don't take bribes. What you gonna give me that I don't already own anyway? He said, obedience is what I want. And you do that, there'll be no reversals. Can I speak this over your life today? May you walk in such obedience to God that even the stuff you didn't pray for, he'll bless you with it anyway. Wow. Right, Y'all don't know how to thank him. Watch this. I'm in such pursuit of God. Lord, I pray that you give me what I pray about, but then the stuff that I didn't know to pray for, would you just drop it in my seat? I, I, I'm talking about I'm talking about standing in line waiting on your food don't open your mouth don't trip and then when they give you your food they say we put some extra fries and gave you a complimentary soda just because you you didn't act a fool in the process the kind of obedience that you walk in that you don't worry because you got so much trust in God that you will eat a cheeseburger with a plane going down. Because if you made me a promise that I was going to be here, I got to survive this. Somebody ought to lift up your hands and shout obedience, obedience. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to know what the hot word is in Christendom? It's obedience. The willingness to tell God yes when you really want to tell God no, but you give him a yes anyway. It's better than sacrifice. I'm closing. But what God wanted from Saul when he did not give it to him, that's when God said, okay, now I know for real, for real, you can't be trusted with this. So I'm going to let you know now so it won't be no misunderstanding. I'm replacing you. If you can't do what I tell you with what I gave you, I'm replacing you. What could be more important than doing what God asked you to do in the position that he gave you? I got to do this over here. I, I need to handle it. What could be more? I was visiting a, years ago when I was doing youth ministry. I was visiting a preacher. I was just talking to him and his pastor came in he waved and he said to the minister that I was dealing with, he said, uh, I need to see you when, you when you get a moment, get a moment. So he's all right. And he stayed there and kept talking to me. And I said, didn't he say he need to holler at you? You going? Oh, he'll be all right. And the same thing I asked you was what came out of my mouth. What, what could you possibly be doing here? 
that is more important than what the person who gave you your job needs from you right now. Some of y'all going to SMH at that, brother. But what are you doing in your life right now that is more important than the God who placed you where you are? God, I got to do this right quick. <laughs> you know, hey, you know me. <laughs> got to do this. God said, all right. Somebody else who loves me enough to make my words important will do that. And to my surprise, this is the shouting ground. After Saul heard this, as sad as he was, he started worshiping. Who gets fired? He said, yeah, I deserve that. And begins to worship. I'll tell you one thing. You can mess up and tear it down and God is gracious enough to still hold it together until you get it together. Can you just lift your hands and thank God for every person that can be honest and say, PW, I've been disobedient. I ain't do everything right. Boy, if you knew my story of the times that I failed God, you wouldn't believe how far away I got from him. But the fact that he keeps reeling me back in. You you wouldn't even believe that I'm in church today. After all that I've done to offend God. But now my strive is to operate in obedience. And may he bless you for the rest of your days. Sometimes God will bless you according to his grace and sometimes God will bless you according to his mercy. But I want to live in such a way that God says, you've been obedient enough. Yeah, I'm going to bless you. Yeah, I'm going to do it for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to believe you in this moment for the obedience of your people today who flow in a walk with you that is genuine and sincere. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. But God, we simply want to be obedient. Let God be true and every man a liar. Let them talk about us. It won't be the first time. Let them laugh at us. It definitely won't be the first or second time. But all we want is for you to be glorified. And we ask you for this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you clap your hands and give God a good praise right now? Come on, let's do better than that, y'all. Let's, let's just give God an obedient praise. Let's praise him like he wants to be praised. With all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Set me on fire. Listen, if you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, this is the moment to do it. That's the instruction. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. It's as simple as ABC. A, hey, I'm, I'm acknowledging that I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. B, I believe in my heart. C, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead. And just like that, you are saved. If you're looking for a church home, put in the comment section, I want to join FCC. If you accepted Jesus for the first time, put in the comment section, I accept Jesus today. We are about to give in this room, and we're going to give our very best that we can give to God on today. Amen. I I don't think it's uh, unreasonable. We can get about $5,000 right here today. Amen. A hundred people saw at least a seed of $50, and we can do that. We'll close out the month real good for those in this room, those that are watching right now. We can do that even right now. 
But whatever your best seed is, you say, man, I got more than that. I'm, I'm able to sow bigger than that. You do that today. The ways to give are on the screen. Cash app is dollar sign, the number four, W-O-R-D-C-C. And if you're giving to our building project, the number, dollar sign number four, future home number two. Don't forget that you can text to give. Text four word, that's the number four, W-O-R, no. Text, yes, the number four, W-O-R-D, and the amount that you would like to give to 833-380-8. 8606. All right. Sometimes I'll be forgetting. 830-380-8606. Thank you so much for your giving, for your sowing into good ground for what God is calling us to do. All right. Let's crank it back up now. You to be glorified. You to be all I want. and I don't want to forget this pray for Mrs. Erica Robinson and her family uh, Miss Stacy Thompson 
Uh, that's Erica's dad, Stacy's husband, uh, went home to be with the Lord just this past week. The funeral is Thursday at noon, Wednesday at noon at Smith and Gaston Funeral Home. Uh, there's going to be a family hour, uh, I think from 1 to 5 on Tuesday, uh, or viewing from 1 to 5 on Tuesday. If you uh, get an opportunity to go by and sign the book, if you can attend the funeral service, please be there on Wednesday at 12 noon. Um, moments like this, you can't ever bring the person back, but if they see people that are from their church family that are just there, even when you don't know the words to say, yeah. uh, sometimes your presence says enough. So please lift up uh, Erica and Miss Stacy and their entire family this week. Don't forget, we'll be doing Bible study at 645 on Wednesday as well. We'll be praying every day this week. But I really wanted us to make sure. And listen, when I say that, don't go home and forget. Actually pray for that family uh, in Amen. such a difficult time as this. I love y'all so much. Thank you for every person that has sown seed. Everybody shout, second Sunday. Second Sunday. Second Sunday. July. Second Sunday in July. We will have our update on our Kentucky trip on the second Sunday in July, immediately after the worship experience. So uh, make sure that you're here on that day so that you can get the next level information. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and especially what our hearts have felt. Thank you for your word, for the strength of your word, for the power of your word, for the validity and the vitality that it gives to us. Bless now every person that has sown seed today. Let this ministry be all that you've called it to be as you've called us to be all that you want us to be. And bless us now as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Go with us and stand by us. Lead us, guide us, direct us, and protect us. Not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Love y'all. Be good.